Hello, my name is Dwayne Robinson. I'm a principal program manager in the Power Virtual Agents team. And this video is going to walk you through how to build a customer specific demo in just minutes. If you don't have an environment to build test bots in, then the best way to do this is to go to aka.ms slash try PBA and you can go create your own environment that you will be in full control of so that you can build all your demos that you're going to need. So feel free to go out and do this and you can renew your trial account if you want to keep it around. As long as you don't try to do something excessive and build a whole bunch of high volume things, you'll be totally fine. So once you've created a bot, you can go in and you can go configure your bot for use for a specific customer. Now, I'm going to create a bot here that is a Lowe's bot to just use them as a demo for this particular video. Now you can go into the settings, go to bot details, give the bot an actual name that will be associated to your customer. You can even change an icon if you want. Then what I do is I go into the boost conversations and I set it to the .com for the company that I'm working with. In this case, we're setting it to Lowe's. I don't change the defaults on the high setting here. I leave this alone. I then will go into topics and I make sure that I turn off these three different training topics here. Now we'll go and to test the bot. So what we're looking to do here is come up with different things to ask the bot that will allow us to be able to test it to figure out what our conversations are, what are things that it can answer with the boosted conversation. So I'm gonna ask it a question here just to see about like store locations and what you're going to see is that in this case, it didn't actually answer this question. Now, let's try asking it a different question. And you'll see here, if I ask about military discounts, for example, what's going to happen is it is going to respond. So let's take a look at what are the potential things that it might answer? And I'll show you a trick to be able to figure out what are examples of things that you should be able to ask. So we're going to switch over to Lowe's.com and we're going to look at this website. Notice all the different things that are on it. If we click around, we can see all kinds of information that they offer. Notice that one thing I like to do is these major headings. I like to go dig into each of them to be able to understand what are things that the website actually does so that I can figure out what are some of the questions that I want to ask. I even click around and look for different things around like kitchen information and then double click and dive in because you don't want to just do high level things. You might want to find specific things where you can go ask for specific information around something. So now that we have an idea of different things that it can handle, notice that I can go and ask questions about this. And now that we know, for example, pantry organizers is something that they offer, we can go ask questions and then we can see that it's gonna return some results. Now, what I do is sort of bounce back and forth between the website, go in and look at different things. I try to. And again, I want it to be in different categories. I want to have like a bunch of different things. And notice here, like Lowe's has a credit card uh, offering. We've got other things that we can look through in here around installation services. And we can click into some of the stuff and be able to play with it um, to figure out what are all the different categories of questions you might want to ask. So just make sure that you understand spend some time on the website to take a look at some things. Another thing that you want to find is you want to find a location on the website that allows you to be able to fill out a form. And this will be key. So you want to find an example in this case with Lowe's. If I go into door installs, 
you'll see here that you can actually go through and schedule a door install. And when I do that, I have a form. This is super key to be able to find in your demo is where they have a form. Make sure you take notice of what is all the information that they're collecting for this form. And then we need to come up with a way to ask a question that will make it send us to this form with Boost Conversations. So now that we know that this is a door install, what we're going to be looking for is how can I go and ask a question that will make it go to the site? And so I chose to say, how do I schedule an exterior door install? And when I send this in, I want to see that it sends me back a link. And that reference link, I want to be able to click it. And when I click it, it should take me to the place where I can fill out the form. Now, that's going to be very helpful for us when we get into our co-pilot demonstration. So make sure that you've got this link um, checked and that this question is the last question in your list. Speaking of a list, generate yourself a file like this that has all these different questions that you might want to ask. And in those different questions, make sure you're jumping around on the website in different places and you're looking for a couple of different options in your questions. So you'll see here jobs is a great example. A lot of websites have jobs um, and you'll see a bunch of other areas that I pulled together. Another key thing that you're looking for is you want to look for questions where you ask a question and you get multiple links in the actual return value. This is important because this gives you the opportunity to explain that this is not just a search. It's actually summarizing the information on both of these particular links. You'll notice that some of these have only one link. Some of them have multiple links. You just want to make sure that you have multiple links and you see something like this with a summarization. Make sure that you put that into your list of different things that you're looking for and make sure you go through and test all these different, um, different ways of saying things that you want to go after because those are what will allow you to be able to have a good, um, a good breadth of different things that you're going to be talking about with the customer. So now we want to focus on that last question that we were talking about earlier, where we wanted to do the how do I schedule an exterior door install? And notice that I've got all the different questions. I'm going to select this last one. And the way I like to do it is I go ahead and take this when I'm ready to start testing it. And I just copy and paste it in. Now, now that I've got this, again, Keep in mind this link here. We want to make sure that we get down what are the things that we want to build inside of the copilot. So when you look at this form, pay attention to everything that's inside the form. And you need to make sure that you're going to author a copilot way of saying what you want. So let's create with copilot. So the first thing is we need to get the name of our topic and we need to get like, we also need to think about how to create a topic to do something. Now, when you look at the actual statement you said here, you need to make sure that you, that you say things in the name of the topic um, that will drive the training of the intents to do this. So schedule a door install. And notice that in the content here for the creation component, I'm going to make a statement here that does stuff like create a topic that allows a user to schedule an install collecting their first name, last name, street address, and yada, yada. So the idea here is making sure that you say it in a way where the NLU will actually get trained properly on the, on the creation component. Because if you don't do it right, then what will happen is you when we go to copy and paste that question in again to show that the authored experience is different, you won't get the training properly. So again, look at what is in the content here because the other thing is we need to do iterations and you don't want everything in the first creation component because we want to do 
an iteration on it. So I'll show you a good example of what you can do to be able to address that in just a second. So always make sure you hit allow here. You can explain that this allows for co copy and paste to work. If you don't do that, copy and paste won't work. Notice how we've got the trigger phrases. They seem like they're good. You want to scroll down in this. You want to point out things like where the user's entire response, it didn't actually get the street address. It's fine that it didn't make it perfect because the whole topic or the conversation you're going to have is that this helps an author and an author should always check to see what is generated off the back end. So we'll go ahead and change this and select street address as the way to be able to do that. And we'll continue to scroll and notice that everything else seems to be fine based upon this. Um, you can point out the information on like what we added and such. Notice that we got a node selected here, so I unselect that. Now, you want a follow-up for your first iteration to be something that, that makes sense in the context of, of the scenario. So in this case, we're going to ask a question on preferred contact method. If you use words like such as and then give it some options, it'll create a multi-choice option for you. So what we're going to do is let's move this back away. Let's drop this text in to be able to say that we want to select a preferred contact method. And then what we'll do is we'll hit We'll hit update. Now we'll let this run. And what we should see is that once this is complete, we should have created a new question node that will ask this question with a multi-choice. So if you notice this taking some time, it's fine. Fill that in with this, you know, what's what's going on. Make sure you see the screen box that says it's successfully completed. And then what we'll do is we'll scroll down and at the end, you'll see that it created the multi-choice option we want. Now, you'll notice here that this message is out of order here. That's fine. What you're going to do with that one is you're going to go ahead and you'll delete this one because the idea here is that we want to explain that we are authoring, right? So it's not it, it going to do exactly everything in the order, order you want, but as the author, you're going to make these changes. Now, you'll notice that I put summarize on an adaptive card, but you'll notice at the very bottom, this is an opportunity for you to show examples at work. So what we're going to do is we'll click the summarize, and then you'll hit update. And what this will do is put in an adaptive card at the end. And with this, you want to make sure that you call out that an adaptive card is JSON. Maybe you don't know how to author that. You also have to convert the JSON to a record and all of those type of things. But what you want to explain is that you're building an adaptive card, dynamic adaptive card. And you'll click on this media component and you'll scroll down and you show that all of the different things that we collected are now showing in this adaptive card as an example. Now, what we'll want to do next is we'll want to make sure that we show people how to target a, a specific node because you don't have to do the whole topic. So we'll select a node. You highlight this over here to show them that one node is selected. And what I like to do here is just use the opportunity to explain message variations, put in add three message variations, talk about how message variations make the bot feel more, uh, more natural in the way that it talks. And you'll see here that it created three different ways of saying this. Now it's important to call out that you didn't have to do anything except say that you wanted three different ways to say it. The other thing is now is an opportunity for you to affect tone. So you can say, make this more professional and then click update. Make sure you pay attention to what is being said and that it changes whenever you do it. So now, you'll see that it did make a change and you're able to showcase this. Now we'll go ahead and we'll click save. All right, now that this is saved, what we're gonna do is you want to go down to where you have uh, your question. 
that you asked here. You'll want to copy it directly from the chat, and you'll want to paste it in to the message here. And you need to make sure that you validate that this is going to fire the uh, the new topic or the new conversation we just built. This allows you to explain to the customer that now you've changed the behavior of it as the author of the bot. So no, we're not relying on a generative response here. So this is one of the key messages to land. Now, if you go and you go to the demo website, what you can do is you can go ahead and put in like a statement here about, hey, this is a bot we built in just minutes for this particular company, name their name on it. The other thing is go grab all of the questions that you created and drop them in here. And you'll find that what you'll end up with is it will it will publish onto the example one. Now, if you don't have to republish in the case that you need to make these changes, just saving this will save it to the demo website. So you can just hit the save button. I've already saved this, so I don't need to do it here. And then, and I would suggest that you do that ahead of time. But you can point out to people the channels if you'd like and the demo website if you want to show this to them later. The other thing is I typically don't publish before I do my first demo. But when you get ready with the customer, you'll hit publish. And during this time while this is spinning, you want to call out that it's taken care of. You don't have to stand up any infrastructure or anything. And just that quick, you've got this into a production access point for people. And I want to share it with my uh, associates so I can click the demo website button. You'll point out that they can go click any of these buttons over here on the left, and it will ask the questions that they, they saw that we were already doing in the demo. And you'll see here, I, I do a couple of them just to show them that it's live. Then the last part is you want to share this with them. You want to give this to them and leave it behind. So the way to do that is go up to the URL at the top and grab this URL and paste it into the actual um, chat for the meeting. And that way you can tell people they can go test it themselves. They don't need to. Um, to ask you to put anything in. A lot of times people will ask you to ask it things throughout the demo. You tell them, no, I'm actually going to give this to you so that you can ask it whatever questions you want. And so this is a very powerful component at the end to be able to leave this with them and they can go and do the demo themselves back with all the questions that you've already built. So I hope this really helped you be able to understand how to be able to build an effective demo. Um, I will continue to record more uh, like educational videos and stuff on my YouTube channel. So if you guys follow uh, my YouTube channel, you'll be able to get all the latest content. Also, be aware that you can go sign up for the trial for PVA. So if you don't have an environment, you should totally go sign up for a trial and use that as your demo environment. You can continue to renew demo tenants uh, every 30 days. Um, there's no issue in continuing to keep that up to date. So everyone in the field should have their own copy. So with that, have a wonderful day. Hope this was helpful. And we'll talk again soon.